All right, guys, I thought it'd be kind of a fun video, especially as the year is coming to the end. And uh, I just wanted to, seeing as the year is coming to the end and I do more EDC videos, I thought I would talk about my Grail EDC pickups or knives that I got this year that were kind of on my hit list or kind of Grail list. So I guess these ones, um, it's hard to exactly say Grail. I feel like that, that word is overused quite a bit, but these knives are knives that are really on my hit list, knives that I wanted to add to my collection for multiple years and have finally been able to uh, add them to the collection. So now, so without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Instagram, the Patreon, the support is always heavily appreciated. Now let's talk about them. Okay, so I'm going to start off in chronological order, even though I got the last two uh, a week apart from each other, less than a week apart from each other. But first, and uh, in the spring, I think around May, is when I picked up the Strider SNG. Now, as you guys know, probably I've kind of rotated my channel from being as outdoor knife focused to more everyday carry knife focused. And so that's given me the ability to get a lot more of the EDC knives that I've wanted to get. So in the past, I was really putting more money and time and for concentration into finding and acquiring e or outdoor knives. So now I'm acquiring a bit more EDC knives. But that being said, I was still able to acquire this one in the spring. And so this one is, like I said, a Strider SNG. It came out of one of their drops from this year with the G10 Gunner Grip. So it's super aggressive super grippy and uh, not too uncomfortable actually in all honesty when you hold it and uh, of course it does have flame anodized titanium on this side and then of course has this classic tiger stripe camo for the blade now this one is an s30v which is i actually kind of like because a lot of people think that you know s30v is very outdated it's older steel and certainly it is but uh it is a really well proven steel and strider treats it a little bit softer than a lot of other companies so it makes it a, a bit more durable than a typical or maybe more uh, normal S30V. So it's really interesting to use because it's almost like using a different type of steel with it being lesser, it's, it's less hard than a normal S30V. Anyways, I wanted to add the Strider for a number of reasons as I've probably beat to death in other videos. You know, I really wanted to add this knife because Strider is an original kind of knife, high-end knife maker. So I wanted to add it to the collection for that purpose or for that reason primarily. And in addition to that too, I wanted to see, you know, what the hype is about these knives. There is not as much of a mainstream following with the Strider knives as much as there is kind of a cult following with these guys nowadays. So I wanted to see, you know, why that cult loves Strider knives. And so far I've actually really been enjoying this blade. It's definitely a tanky kind of hard use expensive knife, but a lot of fun. Okay. Next one up on the list is going to be the CRK or Chris Reeve knives in Kosi. And this one is the large in Kosi with micarta inlays. Now these guys are just generally hard to find. Not many of them pop up for sale too often. And when they do, they usually get bought pretty darn quick. So like I said, this is an in Kosi by Chris Reeve knives. And uh, this is a large one. Like I said, they're pretty hard to find. But uh, I really did want to add one to the list because I really love this blade and I actually like its predecessor, the CRK Sebenza 25, which is what the essentially this Inkosi became. Uh, it used to be the Sebenza 25, which they made for the 25th anniversary of the Sebenza. And essentially it was just a modernized version of the Sebenza. So the Sebenza has gotten updates, but this was kind of a modern rendition of it with, you know, finger grooves cut into the first few portions of or kind of the upper portion of the handle a redesigned lock that the lock interfaces with the detent ceramic detent ball and so there's just a number of different kind of changes to bring the Sebenza into the modern era because the Sebenza believe it or not like the first original design was made all the way back in the late 80s so around 88 to 89 and so that blade is actually pretty darn old and while it is very classic and very nice I do have a Sebenza 21 I love it and one won't be selling it, but uh, I did want the kind of modern updated version or what Chris Reeve would see as the updated version of the Sebenza. So like I said, this is the Nkosi or the large Nkosi and uh, I got it basically to match with my large Sebenza 21. So they are both um, micarta inlaid large versions of 
their respective designs. So overall, I really do like it. This one still needs some break in. I got it a little bit less or about almost a month ago. I'm sure it'll be much longer by the time you guys see this video, but uh, it is a really nice blade, very high end, very nice. And as I've talked about in many videos, a very classy knife. Okay. So the knife I got shortly after getting the Incosi, before I actually even got the Incosi in, I was still in shipment, is the full-sized XM18 Hinderer, or Hinderer XM18. Now I've had a three inch XM18 for about two years now, and I really do like it. It's this little guy right here. And this is actually probably one of my favorite knives when I want a smaller EDC knife because it's so well built and it, is, it just fits in my like daily life so well when I want a smaller knife. Anywho, I did want to get a true, true to life full-sized XM18. So this is a three and a half inch XM18. And this one is probably one of my favorite knives in my collection at this moment, just because it has a lot of purple on it. And while I don't really talk a whole lot about personal preferences, purple is one of my favorite colors. And I think it's such a unique color. You don't really see it too often in everyday carry blades. So this guy is customized. Of course it is aftermarket. Uh, handle scales and stuff but you guys can see there it does have purple scales with a purple anodized liner and of course it is a really beautiful knife um, this one is running 20 cv steel with the uh, recurve blade option so this one really kind of hit a lot of personal marks for me i know the the uh, recurve blade isn't terribly practical but i do really love the way recurved blades look they are very pretty so that was another kind of deal for me about this knife was it looked really gorgeous had good steel and uh, it was purpled out so yeah really do like this blade and of course uh, the last thing this thing is running on skiff ball bearings so you guys will probably notice that this thing does drop shut it is super super smooth and so it is just an overall really really lovely knife and once again all of those things kind of add together uh, to make this knife one of my favorites. And so while it's certainly not one of my most expensive knives, the Nkosi was actually about $200 more than this little hinder. Um, I really do love this hinder. It is just super cool, super awesome. And it checks off a lot of boxes for me. In addition to um, the more I kind of get into the high-end knives, the more I find that I actually really like uh, the hinder XM18s as a whole. Once again, having a couple of them, uh, I really do enjoy the build quality, the fit, the finish, and overall the execution on them. They just are really cool knives. And I think the biggest thing that gets me with hinders is I love the aftermarket customization. So if you want things like purple scales, you can get them. You can throw skiff bearings in them. You can make them super smooth, super clean. And uh, there's just so many possibilities with hinder knives. So I really like that uh, component or that aspect of them. And that is why it was on my hit list and why I wanted to get a full-sized XM18. Okay, guys, so those have been my three pickups for the year. I don't think I'll be adding any high-end or any more high-end knives, uh, at least for a little bit, probably not until the new year. But those are the three high-end knives that I got this year, and uh, they're all pretty awesome, pretty cool. And once again, when it comes to high-end knives, I don't just buy them because they're expensive. Usually the reason why it takes me so long to get high-end knives is that I have to really want uh, or you really, like, be on fire to get one you know I really have to desire the attributes or the reason for it so I don't just you know buy expensive knives so that I can flex on people or try to you know show off how much money I have it's really a certain kind of deeper nostalgic or deeper rooted reason into wanting to purchase uh, a more expensive knife something like this in Kosi you know I wanted to buy because I've wanted it in, wanted an Nkosi for multiple years and you know I wanted originally the Sabenza 25 but uh, once again it became the Nkosi and so I wanted to get the Nkosi for a good number of years after you know the 25 was no longer being made and in fact one of these years I may actually pick up a 25 just because I really do like the design of them however that's uh However, those are my knife acquisitions for this year. Once again, we'll see what the next year holds for high-end knife acquisitions. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.